All right, Whitfield was born 300 years ago, 1714. Does that put him in perspective? Uh, Jonathan Edwards was born in 1703, just by comparison. He was born in Gloucester, England. He was educated at Oxford, the greatest university in, in the world at that time. He joined what was called the Holy Club. It was a, a small group Bible study. John Wesley was in the Holy Club. Charles Wesley, the great hymn writer, was in the Holy Club. They invited George Whitfield. There were about eight of them in a small group Bible study and for prayer and for devotions and for service, and not a single one of them knew Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. They were all religious but lost. And the more Whitfield tried by his good works to save him, he was like Martin Luther. He almost killed himself just uh, being so disciplined in the pursuit of godliness, yet he knew not God. And one day, Charles Wesley handed a book to George Whitfield. It was written by a Scottish preacher named Henry Scougal, The Life of God and the Soul of a Man. It was a book on the new birth. It was a book on the doctrine of regeneration. And George Whitfield, age 21, read this book, and he understood for the very first time, it's not him reaching up to God that would save him, it was God reaching down to him to save him. And George Whitfield was born again at age 21. George Whitfield graduated from Ox Oxford. A couple of doors began to open for him to preach from the very first sermon, it was as if the windows of heaven were thrown open and the power of God descended upon him and those who heard. It spread and it grew. And over the next two years, this unknown 23-year-old preacher was electrifying England with his preaching. He received a letter from the Wesleys who had gone to the mission field to Georgia. The Wesleys were still lost, unconverted, on the mission field, trying to preach, but with no effect. They invited Whitfield to come, and Whitfield gets on a ship, and he sails to Georgia. He sees the need. He purposes that he will establish an orphanage. To raise the money, he gets on a ship, and he sails back to England. And as he comes back to England, Whitfield has a message. The message is the necessity and the nature of the new birth. And he begins to preach that, except you be born again, you shall not see the kingdom of heaven. Except you be born of the Spirit and water, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say unto you, you must be born again.'" 